Are you a relative? No. Perhaps you can help us. Not yet. Can I get a statement from him? I'm sorry. I'm afraid not. Why did you shoot? He won't die. Come on now, tell me what happened. Where did you get this? We took it out of your hand, didn't we? Is it yours? His? Whose? How long had you been there? Did you know him well? Had you known him long? Not long. Not long. The first time I saw him. The first time I saw him. I felt as though something had suddenly squeezed my heart. I treated myself to a taxi because I thought it was going to rain and I had a new hat. The taxi was pulled up by the traffic lights just outside the stadium. I'm plain close police. Do as I tell you. Drive straight on as quickly as you can. Ah, they've got a taxi. I was afraid they might have a car. With the start we've got, that makes the betting slightly odds on us. Excuse me. Hmm? Oh, wait a minute. Come on now, you'll have to do better than this. You've got the law inside your cab for once. You have my official permission to ignore signals, drive on the pavement, do anything you need, but get moving. I suppose I ought to apologize. Oh, please, don't dream of it. Everyone's welcome in my taxi. Don't bother to knock, I always tell them. <laughs> don't mention it. Everyone's welcome in my lap. Don't bother to get up, I always tell them. Madam, you see before you a lamb, snatched from the jaws of the wolf. In fact, if you hadn't come along, I might have been cushed on the head. Uh-uh. Life is too cruel. I believe their taxi is nearly as good as yours. Can't you go any quicker than this? Remember, it's a police job. I can't go no faster. If we go on much longer like this, I'll smash my cab up or run into somebody or something. What you want's a police car. Quick, they've been caught by the lights. Turn sharp left and I think we'll lose them. I'm going to get out in a minute. Slow down along the curb, but don't stop. And here's your reward. Thank you, girl. Well, thanks for the lift. You don't seem to care where I was going. Madam, I care so much, I shall spend the rest of my life wondering where you were going. The driver's been paid plenty. Get him to take you for a nice long ride. It's been wonderful meeting you. Good night. Stop here. Thanks. 
something you left behind. You? I thought I put you in... Ah. Have you taken up the chase, too? Not even, thank you. Well, how does it feel being a temporary millionaireess? I shall reward you immediately in liquid gold. Champagne cocktail, please. No, thank you. You can't afford it. <laughs> I prefer a gin and lime anyway. All right. Make it a gin and lime, will you? Cigarette? Thanks. It must be fun living your way. My way? Don't tell me you know my life story. I mean, being a detective must be exciting. Did you really think I was? But that's what you said you were. I only told the driver that. They can get a move on. Oh. Try it next time you're in a hurry. Look out. Look what you're doing. Your glass. Put your glass down quickly. What's the matter? glass and your cigarette. You were holding them both in the same hand. That's the worst bad luck omen I ever knew. It's, it's a crazy thing to do. You are superstitious. Oh, well, I, I have to kiss the goddess. She won't kiss me. By the way, your, your taxi was very convenient for me this evening. Yes, who were you running away from? You wouldn't be interested. It was just a little argument at the dog track about money. They tried to cheat me. I don't like cheats. But there were three of them and only one of me, so I decided to abandon the argument, but not the money. That's when I landed in your cab. You often have arguments like that. No, I usually play with people who play fair. Um, don't let me make you late. Well, that's all right. You've done so already. All right, I'll put you in a taxi. I've, uh, <laughs> had a taxi. My name's Joan. Is it? They call me Lucky. Lucky? And are you? Touch wood. So far, at any rate, I've had enough luck to live on. But how does one live on luck? You mean you simply gamble for a living? It's you who ought to be the detective. It's funny about you being called Lucky. What's funny about it? Well, tonight, I mean running away from those men. The luckiest thing about you was me, wasn't it? I grant you that. Well, maybe I'm a sort of mascot. Maybe you ought to fold me up and put me in your pocket. How would you like to live with these, eh? Well, you're right. You really do believe in luck, don't you? Yes, I do. Well, I brought you more luck tonight than those things. You've got it all muddled up. Women aren't lucky. Women are bad luck. Yes? Yes. Well, it was a woman who brought you all your luck tonight. First the taxi, when you had to have it. Then the wallet. The greatest mascot you've ever touched is now walking out of your life. From now on, you may never have any real luck again. Wait a minute. Just, um, just one more drink. You told me it was getting late. I must go. Well, cigarette, then. I'm smoking too much. You know, you haven't told me much about yourself. Well, there's nothing to tell. Excuse me. I mean, we must meet again. When are you free? Oh, I, I mean this mascot business. You might be it. Luck's everything. I've got to try it. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing now? Look, you told me it was late. Now it's later. Are you going to get me a taxi? Yes, yes, I am. A, a, a taxi? Now, look. I've got to try this. I'm a gambler. I don't risk losing a mascot. Can you meet me tomorrow night? Tomorrow? Yes, yes, tomorrow, please. I'm not sure. Well, try. You know the Venetia? Meet me in the bar there at 8 o'clock. Please. Your right hand on my left hand, most unlucky. <laughs> Tomorrow night, Venetia Bar. I'll be there expecting you. Please. I'll have to see. Melwood Gardens, Finchley, please. Today, the office has been like a madhouse. Never be a secretary to a man who's in love with his work. Well, how's job hunting? Terrible. Oh, you're slipping. Usually it takes you only a day to find a job. Only seven to lose it again. Really? Must send your employers grey. The quickest way to empty an hotel must be to employ you as receptionist. 
You receive the guests with one hand and slap them with the other. There's two jobs running you've lost through slapping men's faces. It's not their faces I slap, it's the look on their faces. <sighs> Are you going out tonight? Oh, too tired. I've put it off. Good. Then I'll borrow your new coat. You're taking a lot of trouble with yourself. Am I? Come on, tell me. Who is he? Who's who? If you want to borrow my new coat, you can have it on condition I know who it's going to meet. No one if I don't hurry. I told you, you could have it on one condition. Oh, and you can borrow my nylons on the same condition. Are you trying to dress me or undress me? Tell me, who is he? You wouldn't be interested. Just use your imagination. Hello. Hello. Your gin and lime was afraid you weren't coming. I had to. I couldn't bear the thought of you with your luck all gone. Oh, I'm not sure a mascot ought to have a soft heart. It comes naturally. Do you know that I spent the whole day avoiding walking under ladders? Well, we'll soon see how good a lucky charm you are. How are you going to test me? You'll see. Don't be surprised at anything. Uh, let Mr. Bertram know I'm here, will you? Certainly, sir. Left hand for cigarette, right hand for glass. Am I learning? Full marks for the first lesson. Why the fireworks always? Hmm? Oh, just third time lucky. You mind lucky. Well, Flash, still around? Yes. I heard you'd been warned away from here. Yes, I'm not very popular upstairs. But who listens to warnings anyway? Oh, come to that. I might slip you a little warning. They tell me that lately you've been too lucky to be popular. The boys are getting tired of losing money to you. Uh oh. Are you one of these boys you mentioned? Me? <laughs> I never threaten anyone. Oh, by the way, your luck seems to be better than your manners, isn't it? Oh, Mr. Charles, more usually known as Flash, Miss Burns. How do you do? How do you do, Miss Burns? Will you both care to join me for a drink? Excuse me. Mr. Bertram is waiting to see you. Oh, thank you. Do you mind, Flash? No, not at all. This way. Keep your fingers crossed. This is where we test the mascot. Why all the air of mystery? It doesn't do to advertise these things. Good evening, madam. Good evening. I've brought you a new visitor, Bertram. Any friend of yours, Lucky. Shall I keep you a table for supper afterwards? Please do. Mark your steaks, please. Are your steaks marked? Well, I do have a steak yet. Rien Ten, black. Change this for me and let me have the next empty seat, will you? Yes, sir. Are we really still in London? London's a big town. Seventeen, black. Mark your steaks, please. Your steaks marked. Now, I'd better just tell you one or two things before I go into the game. You won't play, of course. You're just my mascot. You'll sit here. Uh, the drinks are free, by the way. Now, whatever you do, don't watch the actual wheel while it's spinning. That's suicide. Get the hang? It doesn't sound very difficult. <laughs> It certainly seems exciting. Are you going to play now? Yes, I am. But remember, don't watch that wheel. Thank you very much indeed. Yes. Your sticks, Mark. Rien va plus. No more, please. 28, black. <laughs> Steaks marked? Yes. Rihanna Vapley. No more, please. Six, black. Oh. You come to bring him luck? Yes. He's good looking. 
And he's a good gambler. Controlled, perfectly controlled. No sign of elation, no sign of annoyance. Mind you, some of the people here aren't as old as they look. I know. I've seen them change. The man with the grey hair at the corner. He isn't a good gambler anymore. It's like a disease with him now. And her. She practically lives on sleeping pills, but, but she can't get the roulette wheel out of her dreams. And the woman next to the croupier. You know, she's quite young, but she's forgotten it. But people who gamble, they don't all have to get like that. No, they don't have to. They just do. I wonder. It's so long since I had the chance of beginner's luck. Could you put those on red for me? I'm sorry. I promise not to play. It might break the luck. I quite understand. I just thought. Mark your stakes, please. Stakes all marked. I knew it. I could feel it. Your glass and cigarette, look at them. I'm sorry, I wasn't thinking, I forgot. It's no good forgetting. You'll have to learn to. I should have laughed. I was just going to make my biggest bet of the evening. I sensed about you and your cigarette, and you stopped me from losing the money. You're a mascot at this, all right. Come on, let's finish with business for the evening. We're going to look for some fun. You mean it's after office hours? Yes. According to the Gamblers' Union, it's now time I fed the mascot. To little Joe, the good luck girl. It won't be little if you make me have champagne. It's fattening. It's a perfect name. Joe is short for Joan. Little Joe is a throw in a dice game. You see, you throw both the dice, and if you get a two and a one, it's called Little Joe. It's a lousy throw. Oh, I'm so glad. If I've got to be a throw, I insist on being a lousy one. <laughs> but it fits. If you throw Little Joe, you probably lose. If you throw away a lucky mascot, you probably lose too. I hear we have to congratulate you, Lucky. Nice win, eh? My new mascot. A very charming one, if I may say so. Enjoy yourself. Messages stronger, things last longer when I dream. Forgive me for dreaming when I'm watching you sketch it down. Like? I hurry the day for things I pray for when I dream. Forgive me for dreaming when I rest in your arms. You're holding me closer than before. And though it may not be anything more, forgive me for dreaming. Forgive me if I dream. You'll have to have a percentage. Percentage? Of the winnings. You came as a mascot, brought me luck, I've won. You've got a share coming to you. But they're your winnings, not mine. I just came for the fun of it. But you've got a right to a share. There can't be any argument about that. The only question is, what basis shall we work on? I'll take another glass of champagne and call it quits. Oh, come on now, we'd have to talk this over and get it settled. After all, you're a sort of business partner. Am I? Yes, I suppose I am. I want you to come again, whenever you possibly can. But I can't expect you to tag around watching me play just for the fun of it. 
We've got to have a proper business arrangement. I'm tired. Do you mind if we go? All right. Thank you, sir. No more business talk for tonight. But there's something I want you to do. What? Do you know Ravar's dress shop in Brook Street? Yes. Well, go there tomorrow, give them your name, and see what they've got for you. Now, no. Now, no more arguments. One's enough for one evening. Roger, I'll flag off pretty lady, sir. Sure to bring you luck. Thank you. Enjoyed yourself? Yes. You won't mind if I don't come with you? It's such a long way back again. Of course not. Melbourne Gardens, Finchley, please. When's next time going to be? Can I phone you? If you like. Good night, little Joe. Good night. Don't forget Ravaz. Come on, face it. That pretty little thing is fading away on you. You've been mooning about for two days now. Tell me what's on your mind. There's nothing to tell. With any date that gets a girl home after 2 a.m., there's always plenty to tell. Now, don't jump to conclusions. That was different. Darling, they're always different. At least, we always hope they're going to be. Have I got to read your mind? You've been trying to. And here's what I've got to. One, he was someone new, otherwise you'd have told me. Two, he's got all the vitamins. I could see that in your eyes the other night. Three, little Joan took a bit of a tumble, hence that bar lamb look on your face. And four... Four... Oh, come on, don't be so cagey. What's the time? <gasps> Gosh, I'm late again. If the boss doesn't tick me off soon, I'll know he's got designs on me. Yes? Just a moment. It's for me. You secretive... Hello? I'm sorry, I had to get rid of someone. Well, how's the lucky charm this morning? Get home all right the other night? Did you think I'd forgotten to phone you? Did you say you would? I can't remember. Oh, we'll have to attend to your memory. Because there's another thing you haven't remembered either. I'm phoning from Ravaz. They tell me you haven't been here yet. No. I didn't think you meant it. Of course I meant it. All you've got to do is come here and give your name. I've arranged everything. But I don't want you to give me anything. I enjoyed going out with you. That's, that's not quite the point, Jo. You see, I've got a feeling that it might upset the luck if you aren't having a show. You're quite crazy, aren't you? Never mind that. And look, there's something else. Are you free tonight? Well, I could be. Fine. Especially important. I want you to wear a new evening dress. Will you meet me at the Venetia Bar at 8 o'clock? I'll tell them you're coming to choose the dress. Hmm? Promise? All right, then. Bye-bye. Loveliest looking mascot I ever had. You mean I'm even prettier than a horseshoe? Don't tell me, I know what you have. Champagne, Barbara. You look like champagne. Lovely. Well, lucky you can pay compliments. I hate to tell you, but it does belong to you. Well, I promise not to ask for it back until you're safely home. What are the arrangements for tonight? We're going to one of these slap up charity baccarat parties. Very social, full of people with more money than sense. Where is it? Big private house, just off Park Lane. You ready? You don't seem in such a hurry to start gambling tonight. Oh, I prefer to let the game get warmed up first. It's better to start when the other players are getting a bit taut and strained. They don't think so clearly, then. Well, to the luck. To the luck? Six. 
Bank rents. Bank of 200 pounds. Sweeby. Sweeby's call, sir. No cards. One. Five. Five. Six. And six. Hunter wins. And the bank passes. Your bank, sir. 200. It doesn't seem very exciting. Oh, it has its moments. What do I do while you play? Shut my eyes and stand on my head? You make it sound pretty awful. It must be boring for you not to play. No, I'd rather not. I'd be scared stiff. Oh, there's no need to be scared when our luck's around. How much is the bank, madam? 250. 250 Four. in the bank. Very good. 250. 50 here, please. Will you take these in? Yep. Stack around. Oh. Hunter wins. Let's have another drink before I start playing. But I've had three already. Oh, one more won't do you any harm. I like it here. Think you'll be all right here for a while? Seven, six, thank you, Wim. May I sit down? Of course. Thank you. It's a happy meeting. Hmm? I wonder where they get this awful stuff from. Would you care to join me for a brandy? Well, I've been drinking champagne. But all the more reason for a brandy now. They're excellent partners. Uh, wait up. Two brandies, please. Two brandies? Thank you. Yes, sir. Have you known Lucky for a long time? Not long. Charming fellow. Oh, is that true? Exquisite taste. Nine. One. You win, sir. Mm. You know the game? Piggy Wiggy. No. Oh, it's a lovely game. I'll show you. My, my different glass for that. Now you take the glass between your fingers like that. Yes, now you want some brandy. Now, this little piggy went to the market. Now you drink it. This little piggy stayed at home. I drink again. Nice. Huh? <laughs> 400 pounds to the bank, ladies and gentlemen, please. Who says Balco? He can't run it again. I'll stick it for half. Okay. Bonker. Bonko is called, sir. Eight. Eight. <coughs> Nine. Nine. Oh, all right, all right. You win, sir. My head's trying to jump sideways. Who's yeah. lucky? Well, I think he, he must be very busy. But you want this, some, some fresh air. Come on. I'll take you home. Lucky. What in the name of... Well, she was lonely, so I had to drown her loneliness. That's all. Lucky, hold me.
And about time, too. Can I come in? No. You know, you passed out on me last night. Directly I got you in the taxi. Couldn't have timed it better. Oh. Where am I? In my spare room. I always keep it for people who collapse on me. Oh, there's the breakfast gone. Don't be too loud, will you? Bathroom's on the left. Here, you might like to borrow this. Unless, of course, you prefer to come to breakfast in evening dress. Hurry up. Charlie. So you've got two appetites this morning, eh, sir? Well, the boss sends his compliments and says he hopes the other appetite will be a permanent customer. Oh, uh, is he short of customers? Well, not so short as we can give you a discount on quantity. Anyway, the contract he passed for your breakfast will be adjusted to your uh, disadvantage. What? I read the cost of living was pegged. Oh, it ain't pegged if you insist on eggs, sir. These is unofficial eggs. They was laid by a hen very careful after dark. How do you know? Were you watching her? Oh, not me, sir. It was like this. These eggs first came into the hands of my cousin Elsie. Then my cousin Elsie, she sells them to her uh, brother-in-law. Then the brother-in-law sells them to his sister Mary. Each time, of course, business is business, even if it's family business. In fact, you might say they arrived on that tray there by my, what you call, uh, devious process. They better be fresh, Charlie boy. Well, they ain't broken anyway. But what I want to explain, sir, that these eggs is not going to be none too cheap for you. Oh, well, so long as they're worth eating. Oh, they're not meant for eating. They're meant for selling. And by the way, there's another little matter. <laughs> you owe me a fiver, sir, if I might mention it. Since when? Since last night. Haven't you read you, Piper? You don't mean to say that... Yes, that bet we had. It's in black and white, a knockout in the ninth round. It's a misprint. Oh, you gave me five to one in quids. Five quids with a misprint would be forgery. <laughs> You're ruining me, Charlie. Oh, well, just ring me up any time what you want to have a bet on a fight, you know? Why should I? You're the only man I ever lose money to. Blimey, what a geezer. Breakfast is served. Choice of egg or aspirin. And don't laugh. You're more beautifully dressed every time I see you. How are you feeling? Thoroughly ashamed. Don't I look it? You look as if you could do with some breakfast. Come on. Just coffee. Black. So that swine Flash lured you into mixing your drinks, eh? I thought he was a friend of yours. Friend? He's probably thinking I'd forget all about you so he could see you home. Don't I have any say in such matters? Suddenly, ping, you gave up having any say in anything. All right. Rub it in. I feel awful. I don't fancy breakfast much myself this morning. At any rate, you slept well. Do you realize it's nearly twelve? Twelve? I must be going. Oh, must you really? Well, you're already, aren't you? Now, let's see, where did you leave your hat and gloves? Good heavens, I haven't got any day clothes. <laughs> the phone over there. That's no good. There's no one there to answer it. Well, there's more than one place to phone to. I'll do it for you. Ravaz, Madame Therese, please. Don't be ridiculous. I won't let Don't you. Don't argue. No, Lucky. Don't argue. Oh, Lucky, I've already got a lovely evening dress I've no right to have. I don't want... Don't argue. Hello? Hello? Ah, Madame Therese? Very well, thank you. Uh, Madame, you remember the young lady I sent to you yesterday? Exactly. How could you forget? Madame, you know the way things happen. Oh, but of course. Well, will you send round to my flat immediately a daytime outfit? See how easy it is? I only hope she sends something you like. I won't take any more. I should never have accepted anything in the first place. All right. Just as you please. May I have my dressing gown back? 
This is one garment I insist on keeping. <laughs> All right. On one condition. No more arguments. You're very bewildering. Do you live here alone? Yes. It's a nice flat. Yes, I was lucky to get it. It's quite comfortable, plenty of room. That room you slept in is hardly ever used. You can have it whenever you like. What do you mean? You can live there if you like. The luck was terrific last night, Joe. You're the luckiest thing I've ever had around me. Together, you and I can make a fortune. There's nothing to stop us. I wish you'd throw yourself right into this thing, Joe. You could treat it as a job. Often there are games at a moment's notice, and you live oh, way out at Finchley somewhere. Why don't you have that room, eh? It would save such a lot of trouble if you lived here. Think it over. That room's yours if you want it. I must go now. Clothes will be here soon, so I'll leave you to change. Spare front door key. Take it if you like. So long. it would be more convenient for gambling. Where do men think up their gags? More convenient for gambling? What does he think you are, a woman or a pack of cards? But you don't understand. He means what he says. I bet he means plenty. Here's a spare key. That spare room's yours. If you want it, cheerio. I leave you alone while you change your clothes. What a technique. But you don't know him. If you're going to tell me he's different, I can tell you he's just the same. Only more so. Stop it, Peggy. I'm in love with him. Right. Be in love with him. Stay in love with him, but don't throw it away. Be sensible about it. Sensible? What do I get for being sensible? But, Joan, I can't believe you're seriously thinking of it. Why shouldn't I? You say you love him, and in the same breath? Now, look, I'm giving you good advice, and you know it as well as I do. Thanks, but it doesn't help. I love him. Don't you realize that it's the first time it's happened to me? I've got to be with him. Nothing in the world matters except my being with him. It's your life, Joan, and you only have it once, but... I know. I know you're right. But... I fought with myself for days, but in the end... I couldn't fight any longer. I went to live there. No one could have guessed how it would be. He'd said that it would be more convenient for his gambling, and that appeared to be exactly what he did mean. He just didn't see me the way I saw him. He didn't seem to realize that I was in love with him. We went everywhere. He took me to all the smart places and restaurants I'd always wanted to go to. And then often we'd suddenly rush off somewhere for him to gamble. He always seemed to finish up with more money than he started with and insisted that it was due to the luck that I brought him. He was gay and charming. And the luck seemed as if it was going on forever. I began to think he couldn't lose. He always insisted on giving me a percentage of the winnings. It was just a business partnership with him. Then he started to go out alone. 
saying they were games he didn't want to take me to. Perhaps he was trying to prove he could win without me. I didn't know. Until one evening, I was waiting alone in the flat. Sleep a dreaming when I'm watching you smile. I had it a Joe, can you face a nasty sort of evening to help me? Of course I can. It won't be nice, I warn you. Well, I don't mind. I didn't mean to take you to this place. But they've been pushing me around rather badly. I've been losing heavily. I've got to change my luck. Well, why didn't you take me there before? Because it's not your kind of place. Well, I'm ready when you are. All right, then, come on. You back again, Lucky? Our skirts. It's all right, Bennett. I've brought her as a mascot. She brings me luck. Sorry, Lucky. No skirts in here. She's just what I said, Bennett. A mascot. Sorry, Lucky. You know the rules here. Now, now, Bennett. Think of your clients. Don't tell Lucky we want him here. Come on, let him in. Lucky's come back with some more money, haven't you, Lucky? Come on, Bennett. Let him in. All right, Lucky. Come on in. Hola, Charlie and Miss Burns. So glad to meet you again. You're not meeting her again. And the number's five. You're on a five. I lay 15 to 10. Aye, aye. I lay. Look after her for me, will you? Yes, certainly, Lucky. Try and bring me sevens. Yes. Well, are we going to play? Found some money, Lucky? You know better than to ask me that. And what I was shooting for. Fifty. Fifty pound in the middle. Score, you Score. Fifty pound in the middle. Another five. Another five. Another five. Hundred pounds covered. Shoots. Seven in. Seven is right. One hundred pound in the middle. Cover. One hundred pound in the middle. Another five. Another five. Two hundreds covered. Another five. Shoots. Dear lady. Let me introduce myself properly. I'm Doc. Dr. Harris. I'm an old pal of Lucky's. My badge of respectability. It is also, if you'll excuse me, so useful for carrying things. Seven in. Seven is right again. It's a natural. You don't seem to know what you're doing, Lucky. Sure your mind's on the game? Hundred. One hundred oh, pounds in the middle. I'll cover it. Right. I got ten. Two hundred pounds covered. Shoots. Snake's eyes, Lucky. You ought to try and look what you're doing. Come again? I wish Lucky would give it a rest. You simply can't roll the dice the right way anymore. I lay 150 against 100. You won't make it. No money? I'll take a piece of paper. How much you want? 500? Ah, ink. 
last longer. I'll take it again. I'll take it easy, Lucky. It's no hurry. Plenty of time to lose your money. I play at this hundred against the piece of your girl. Hundred? Yeah. Oh. Leave me alone. You heard what he said. He asked for it. I knew I shouldn't have let you in here, Lucky. You heard what he said. He asked for it. Who's playing? I am. Fifty. I'll take two hundred to a hundred that he won't make it. You're on. Fifty pound in the middle. Twenty pound. I'll have twenty. Cold. Oh, Shoot. Snake eyes. Next dice. Aren't you going to play any more, Lucky? Lucky, please don't play any more. <laughs> Bennett, I told you the girl hadn't come to play. That still goes. But I wanted to throw the dice from me, okay? Okay. There's a hundred in the middle. Ten pound is wrong. I better place yeah. your oh, bets now before we're off again. Place your bets. I throw seven. Place your bets. Are you all on right? Shoots. Craps. <coughs> Two and a one losers on the first throw. There's a hundred pounds in the middle again. Fifty. Oh, Try and throw seven, seven, five and two, six and one, four and three. Eight you want. You're looking for eights now. You're looking for eights. Try and throw a six and a two, a five and a three, two fours. Seven out. You were trying for eight. Perhaps you'd better go. It's no good. You better go. There's 50 pounds in the middle this time. 50 pounds. Seven, 100 pounds in the middle. I'd better be going. Give me some sleepers. Take two now. Don't take the third unless you have to. Good night. And cleaned out. Mm. 
Here's your coffee. Thanks. I don't usually sleep like this. Don't you? I wasn't sure you'd still be here. Didn't you want me to be? I told you what happened last night. There was nothing to stay for. Nothing? Nothing. Everything's gone. I lost my head. I caught on the stream like a fool. You and I made a bargain. I can't keep my part of it now. There's nothing to stay for. We didn't make any bargain, Lucky. I came here because I wanted to. That's all. If I've let you down about your luck... Oh, it wasn't your fault. You turned up the luck enough time, Joe. No, it was I who didn't know how to use it. You see, there comes a night when, when you've just got to stop playing because it isn't any good. Every gambler watches for that night. He knows it will come. When it comes, he, he mustn't fight against it. He must recognize it. It's a trap that catches fools who think they're stronger than chance. Nobody's stronger than chance. Snap your fingers at her, she kills you dead. Everybody knows that. Nobody understood it better than I did. It was there last night. I knew it. I could feel it. And yet I went on. Right to the end. Lucky, don't look like that. It isn't the end of everything. You don't understand, Joe. Those men you saw last night, they love nothing better than to break someone. They've taken everything I've got and they know it. To them, that means I haven't got enough money to get back in the game again, so there, there's no chance of my winning it back from them. Have you lost absolutely everything? Yes. But I've got some money, Lucky. That percentage that you insisted on giving me, I've got most of it left. That's yours. I've lost my own, I won't risk yours. But you don't have to gamble with it. Gambling isn't the only thing. It's nice to be told that someone has confidence in you. But a flattened-out gambler isn't worth tuppence to anyone. You'd do better to leave me. There's only one thing to do at a time like this. You put on your best suit, and we'll go to one of the best bars, and I'll buy you the best drink they can produce. Give him another one, Barman. It's working wonders. You're down, Lucky, but you're not beaten. You're going to start a new life. The your money? Hello, Lucky. Hello, Jimmy. I'll try Jimmy. Jimmy, come over here a minute. Well, you're quite the stranger, Lucky. Meet Joan, meet Jimmy. Hello. Hello. Jimmy, I'm badly in need of one of your best tonics. Anything I can do, Lucky, but... I want one of those dogs that run a little faster than they're supposed to do. You're not letting your tongue run loose, are you? She's all right, Jimmy. She and I are a business team. We can talk better over there. All right. You know, you're asking for something very difficult. Dog tracks are getting tighter every day. You can't play monkey the way you used to be able to. A lot of expenses, too. What makes you think I'm not going to pay you for it? Oh, I didn't say that, Lucky. I know your dough's all right. How soon could you do it? I might be able to lose one off next Saturday. Real one? Now, listen, Lucky, either I do it or I don't do it. You know that. You know I've never handed my friend the wrong end of anything yet. I trust you, Jimmy. Same for me to you. What's his name going to be? Oh, grow up, Lucky. The dog won't be fixed until the last minute. You'll get the name half an hour before. There's a newspaper man on the corner, just outside the gate. About 3.45. Ask him if he's got a message for the name of Smith. He will have. And, uh, what's it going to cost? Hundred quid. That's a lot. That's the price. All right. You have it by Saturday. The senior. Lucky, what is it you're going to do? We're just going to back a dog, that's all. But it's going to be fixed. Some dog has to win the race. We're just making sure of knowing. But that's not even gambling. That's worse than gambling. Look, I said I wouldn't use your money, and I mean it. So it's this or nothing. It's going to be this. Paper. Got a message for the name of Smith? Thanks. Hey, 
Express. Get on the Express! Name is Longtail. Number five on the card. The one in orange, there it is. There's not much tote betting on it yet. The money all seems to be for Empress. We can get five to one everywhere on Longtail. Now look, Joan. If we put on all the money in a lump sum, we'll rock the price. So we'd better break it up into small bets all along the line. A little with each bookie. That way they won't smell any danger. You must do the betting because some of these boys know my face. I think you'd better start now. Scribble the stake and price on the back of each ticket. All right? Yes. I'll wait for you here. Ten pounds on long tail, please. Fifty pounds of ten long tail. Number 33, thanks, buddy. Ten pounds on long tail, please. Fifty pounds for ten long tail. The ticket number's 14. Thank you, lady. Ten pounds on long tail, please. Sixty pounds. A ten long tail. Sixty-two. Thank you. Get it all on? Yes. Five to one everywhere? Six to one at some of them. Good. They're starting. No, I never watch it. Throw the tickets away, they're no good. See yourself home, will you? Where are you going? To look for Jimmy. Hello, Miss Burns. Very nice to see you again. But how ungallant of lucky to leave you so suddenly. Not just a moment. I know what's going on here. I know where it's gone now. Maybe I can help you, help you both. That little incident at the dice scale, it was nothing. Next time Lucky and I meet, we laugh it off. But in the meantime, if there's any trouble about money, perhaps I can help you. Why are you telling me this? Why don't you tell him? You know how it is. He's annoyed with me at the moment. He won't listen to me. But he'll listen to you. What are you trying to say? It won't take long to tell you. I advise you strongly to listen. Now, let's go to the bar. Please. You know, Lucky's been very foolish. He's heading for trouble. You mean... No, I don't mean this. This is more trouble. He was heading for trouble when he signed this IOU. You see, in certain circles, an IOU of this size, the danger of things that are floating about if you haven't got the money to meet it. Unfortunately, the IOU is in... In my hands. But why are you telling me this? I only want you to realize that I'm in a position to do lucky a very good turn. For instance, I could tear up this area. On the other hand, it's the way I prefer to put it. I could do you a very good turn. I don't understand. It's very simple. Lucky is lost. He's lost more than he has. As a matter of fact, he's finished. He's out. And right now, he's heading for more trouble. But I said I'm very willing to clear the decks for him by tearing up this idea. I'll do it. 
on a very simple condition. What? I can give you a better place than he can. I can give you more money than he can give you. He hit me. You think I enjoy that? And I haven't forgotten it either. His good days are over. We've taken away his money, now we're going to take his cozy little flat. Where he's keeping you. We'll take that cocky smile off his face. And if you stay with him, you go down with him. Right down in the dirt. It went wrong, Lucky. Something must have slipped up. Honestly, I... Don't take me for it, Lucky. It wasn't me. Look, I'll be straight with you. Flesh, not me! Now, what's the matter? Jimmy wouldn't do a thing like that? I'm telling you, he wouldn't take it. He's just old Lucky it was you who made him do it. He'll be after you now. And what are you worrying about? If Lucky's coming here looking for trouble, it's okay with me. That's perfect. He's going to take a long time to cool down. No, it won't take more than two of them, will it? He's talking about cooling down. But Lucky wants us a lesson. A good lesson. Now, get out. Keep trouble out of here. Right. Don't yes. keep on standing there worrying me, will you, please? I don't think I should be any with you. Let's take a stall this other way, huh? I'll get an ambulance. No. No, Joe. Don't let her do that, Doc. Why not? You tell her, Doc. And get going with me, will you? The bullet's got to come out. You ought to have an anesthetic. You ought to have an X-ray. Shut up talking and get on with it. Lucky, why won't you go to a hospital? I've told you I'm not going. Oh, for pity's sake, start and do something, will you? All right. Is there water boiling? Yes. Put those in, let them boil. How bad is it, Doc, eh? I don't know. Yet. Don't let her think it's bad. And warn her off the hospital, Doc. Lucky, I'd rather you went. Shut up. Kill you if you don't start to do something for me. Why doesn't he go to hospital? 
They're all the same, that lot. If you get a beating, you can take your revenge any time you like. But you must take it yourself. That's one of the rules. Going to hospital is like going to the police. The whole thing gets reported. They're all the same. They'll never go to hospital. What if he's in danger? He'll be all right. When did you last use these? Don't ask him any questions. You are a doctor, aren't you? Of course I am. Get out of here. Lucky, this is no good. He's drinking. Oh, that's all right. But I don't believe he's a doctor. Yes, yes, he is. He's a hush doctor. One who keeps his mouth shut. This girl's been asking too many questions. Take that tongue off her and keep it off. Sorry, Lucky. Ready to give me that one and I ask for it. Yes. I'm going to hurt you, Lucky. Go on. Can't hurt any more than it does already. <laughs> Can't do it. My hands are no good. Get on with it. Get on with it. Can't do it. I have to get someone else. I'm going to get an ambulance. No, you're not. Stop her, Doc. I could get another doctor. I could get the best for a hundred, ready cash. How much have you got? Nothing. You know that. <sighs> Joan. Yes? He knows what he's talking about. Must have some money. Get me some, Joan. Bertram will lend me some. At the Venetia, remember? Ask him for 200. All right. You phone the doctor. I'll get the money. Where do you come into this? Why doesn't Lucky come himself? He's ill. What did Lucky tell you to say to me if I refused to spring the money? Tell Lucky there's no money as far as I'm concerned. But he'll pay you back in no time. Listen, don't fool yourself. Lucky's flat. He won't do any easy borrowing now. The town's all plastered with his paper money. These things get around. There's an IOU for 500. How do you know? Flash has got it. He's been waving it about. With that piece of paper, he can shut all the doors in Lucky's face. Where does he live? 25 Greek Lane. Thank you. I phoned Mr. Charles. He said I was to come here. Flash in? Yeah. Upstairs, first door. Took him in his pants. How kind of you, Telephone. And how kind of you have come. And how very sensible of you to have done both. Does it mean you've changed your mind? Yes, I have. About several things. Allow me. Do sit down, please. Now, what would you like to drink? Oh, I, I seem to remember you do very well on brandy.
for some ridiculous reason. Lucky refuses to go to hospital. Oh, he's lucky ill, then. Lucky refuses to go to hospital because he doesn't want to get anyone into trouble with the police. How very kind and thoughtful of him. I've come to you for a hundred pounds cash and that IOU. And unless I get them, I'll send Lucky to hospital. <laughs> you have a very funny way of asking for things. Now, let's get one thing straight before you do anything foolish, my dear. When Lucky fell ill, I was at Bennett's club. And at least 15 people will only be too happy to testify that I had nothing, nothing whatsoever to do with the... Oh, what happened? Please, don't be disappointed. If you want anything, there is no need for you to threaten me. You only have to ask. I want a hundred pounds, don't you? Of course, if you want it. And then you want this, this little thing. I owe you over 500 pounds. It's also yours. You're giving me them? Yes. Under the condition. You leave Lucky. Immediately. Poor Lucky, huh? Now he's lost everything. May I give you a toast? Goodbye to Lucky. Hello to us. She has a taxi waiting, Flash. All right, come up here. She won't get far. Come on, you can do it. I won't touch that. It's too dangerous. Nonsense. I'm sorry, it's too dangerous. I've got the money. I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do here. I've given him some morphia. Good night. Hoping you'd come back soon. The other doctor gave me a shot or something. And suddenly there's no pain anymore. Except in my eyes, the lights hurt them a bit. Is that better? Mm. I've been waiting for you. I wanted to say something important to you. Yes, Lucky? It's about. I just want to say sorry. There's nothing to be sorry about. Oh, yes, there is. About you and me. I tried to hide everything, John. I wanted the luck so badly. I threw everything else away for it. What did you throw away, Lucky? I was in love with you all the time, John. Kiss me. I've been 
been such a fool. And I took that mascot business so seriously. I thought luck and love wouldn't mix. I was afraid to tell you lest it would break the luck. Come closer, Joe. You can't do that, Flash. You can trust me, can't you? You... You can't do a thing like that, I tell you. Aren't you satisfied? All right. I'll try. He's phoning from the box across the street. He's threatening to break in. What have you done? How did you get this? I'll tell you later, darling. Don't worry. I see. Go over to that chest of drawers. Top left hand drawer. Underneath the collars. But lucky I don't want this. You never know. You've got to look out for yourself now. Pull back the catch on the left. Now be careful. Ready to fire. But Lucky, I'm going to get you to hospital. You've got to go to hospital. If it's him again, if he comes here... Uh... Don't let him get near you. Don't blame me, Flash. I don't know what she's been up to. You're only making trouble, I tell you. Give me this. He's going to smash his way in. He doesn't make threats like that for nothing. No, you don't. Not the police. If they find me here with my instruments. Seven Merton Mews, quickly. Bring an ambulance. Put that tie down if I were you. Stop. Stay where you are. No, you're not used to handling things like that, are you? I have nothing against you. Nothing at all. Stay where you are. I only came to see Lucky. 
Man of Ailu's shoot, are you? Stay where you are. You only get yourself into trouble, you know. Come on now. Be sensible. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. Was it you who called us? Yes. In here, quickly. Lucky was lying helpless. I hardly knew what was happening. I didn't mean to shoot him. It was when Flash grabbed my hand. We know that, gentleman Flash. I can quite believe you had to defend yourself. That's all for now, Miss Burns. Can he make a statement now? What's happened? Can I see him? He's still alive. It was left a little late. I don't know if you'll be able to get a statement. All right, but only a few moments. Hello, darling. Hello. They let me speak to the surgeon. Do you know what he said? He said you were very lucky. You brought me luck again. You always will. But not for gambling. It's no good. It isn't much good, is it? You've done all the gambling you're going to do. Please, promise me. Ever since I was a kid. When we were kids, we used to bet which pigeon would fly away first. Like those two out there. If I were betting now, I'd say the left one would leave first. Now, Lucky. Lucky, you heard what I said about betting. 